It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Z Garcia. Hey everybody, today I'm taking a look at The Prodigal's Club. This game is a sequel to Last Will, and it has the same theme as Last Will. In it, you are trying to lose all your possessions, uh, lose all your money, offend the right people, and basically do the quote-unquote worst at the end of the game, and win the game by doing that. It's sort of like Brewster's Millions, the board game, right? And so the first one was an involved uh, Euro game. This one's also an involved Euro game. That's been uh, perhaps trimmed a little bit, simplified a little bit. And so I'm going to be giving you an overview of how the game works. And then I'll tell you what I think of it. And whether I think it can uh, hold up a comparison to the older sibling, Last Will. Here we go. This is what the game might look like set up at the beginning of the first round. This is with setup already completed. Everything's put everywhere it needs to go. The objective of the game. You are in a fraternity in high society, but you don't care to be a proper gentleman. Instead, you want to lose all of your possessions, or as many as you can. That's this third of the board over here. You are trying to embarrass influential people and anger them. That's here. And you are trying to lose votes in an election, which is this third of the board. At the end of the game, you are going to compare those three scores, and again, you're trying to lose points in those things. And whoever has the lowest of the three, uh, once you compare, so the highest of your three, that's your score. And so the idea is not to get any one of them to zero. The idea is to lose them in a balanced fashion because your highest in the three is your score at the end of the game. And whoever has the lowest score is the winner of the game. Each player at the beginning of the game is given this player board in which you'll keep some action cards you'll gather throughout the game. You are giving your starting uh, possessions that, again, you are going to be trying to lose. You are given some money. You are given this tile that you start with, and there will be sort of a mini game going on with those. These are the characters and uh, that you are dealing with, and they're standing in society, basically, and you're going to be hoping to drop these values down, these tokens. And you are given a certain number of errand boys, represented by these little top hats, depending on the number of players. And so this, everybody is given this full set, and then you are ready to begin. I'm going to show you each player board, um, each uh, part of the board rather, in the central board, uh, on its own, and explain to you the possibilities that each one offers you in the worker placement phase of the game. The game is going to be played over five rounds, and as I said, it's a worker placement game. This board we are looking at here is, well, the center of the board as well. And this is the one where you are going to be trying to get rid of your possessions and money. First of all, the center board here, you can on your turn, uh, when you place a worker, you can place a worker here. That decides your, uh, your uh, place in turn order, and it gives you one of these bonuses. Or you can play here and take this, which gives you any two of these symbols for your uh, usage that round. You can also take a card, which is here at the center. And this card, the interesting thing about it is that it works for all three areas in the game. All right. So you can do one, one of those things, or you can play on this board itself. Again, the idea of the board here is to get rid of your money or possessions. You can play here. Or you can play here and grab a set of cards, any one of them. And the cards, again, if they are um, white, they are one-time use. If they are this brown edge, then you put them on the board I showed you earlier, your player board, and you'll be able to trigger them once every round, typically. So there's two spots for that. You also have spots here for being able to play there and trade a possession that you own with one of the ones here on the board at a two-coin loss. You are able to sell some possessions. You are able to play here and trade one at a three coin loss. You are able to play here in your own color. So this one does not fill up. And you will uh, lose a coin plus a coin for every time unit. And every one of those symbols, like this card here, has those printed on there. Um, some cards will give you that symbol and then you'll be able to chuck some more money. 
you will be able to over here also is this uh, symbol pointing at one of the three colors and that lets you know that when you are dealing with those symbols which uh, can be seen in the corners up here in some possessions well you are going to be losing a further coin which again is beneficial and so you have to time your um, trading and selling right so you can lose the most money possible when you uh, play here on this board again those are all of your options on the money board and at the end of the round these will be replenished from here and these will be replenished from more of these tiles here. Your options in this board are similar to the one I just showed you with the money but the idea here is to lose the votes you're giving speeches and saying ridiculous things to lose your votes and your choices here when you place one of your errand boy top hats here you can go into one of these three spots and take one of these four lots and again, the white cards are one-shot cards. The brown ones, you can keep using them. You can play uh, into this area here, where you are going to lose a vote, vote and get one of these tokens. I'll explain them in one second. You can play in here, and depending on the round, you gain some megaphones. You want to be the loudest and lose some, some votes. Whoever has the fewest megaphones is actually going to gain a vote. Or you can play in here. And again, there's a spot here for every player. And if you play in there, then you lose one vote straight up. These uh, tiles here, when you put them together, you start with one. And then you start building someone. So let's say I've gotten this one already here. And then I go here, I lose one vote. And then I get this other tile here. And so if I put these two together, like so, then I can count as having an extra symbol in that horse. And cards like this, for example say that I lose a vote per horse symbol I have, that would be good if I make this and then have this card. When I trigger it, I'll lose a vote for that. And the votes in the game are tracked on this uh, little board here that I'm moving to show you. And it's we start with a certain number, depending on the number of players, and you are dropping the uh, pawn here, hopefully all the way down to zero. So that is what this board does. You are trying to lose those votes, get those tiles, and use the cards up here wisely. This third and final board, in it you are trying to anger influential people and you are going to be doing so by again playing your top hats in here and taking different uh, actions. And this is all reflected on this little board that each player is going to have in front of them with some influential people tokens on it. And ultimately you are trying to drop these straight down. Sometimes you'll need to move them sideways eventually having the lowest um, total possible on the numbers that these characters are covering up, okay? And so this is like a little bit of a puzzle which you are uh, controlling by placing your workers here. You can place, anybody can go here and you can drop someone straight down, that's what that symbol means, and so looking at the board here again, you can take this character and move them straight down. As long as there's no one blocking their way, they, that can be done. You could go here, and make two moves in any directions. You can go here and make two moves straight down. You can go here or here, and you can take one of these choices, both of these cards, this one card here, or a side uh, sideways downward move, and this card here. Or you can go here and stop this character from affecting you at the end of the round. Every round we'll be flipping over one of these tiles, and that tile tells you something that's going to be affected and in fact move back up, which is the way you don't want to go. And so if this is a tile, for instance, it says that orange and yellow will be affected by being moved upwards. And so this round you're going to be trying to manipulate everything on this little board to make sure that everybody is moved over to red if you can help it. And so let's say at the end of the round this is what your board looks like. You have three characters here, one here, well, only this one will be affected by being moved up, which, again, you don't want. So, this board lets you influence this, uh, just the way, just like the other boards let you influence money and uh, your votes. At the end of each round, which is after every player has placed all of their errand boys, then each player is going to be able to activate all of the brown cards on their own player boards and do some manipulation to, again, lose votes, lose money, and offend the right people. And so these are my possessions here, my cards. 
this is what I'm building here to give me more symbols, my, um, the influential characters I am trying to offend, and so I could do something like this, for instance. I could activate this card here, which says I'm going to drop one character down for every, uh, of those uh, uh, fork and knife symbols and so I'm looking to see how many fork and knife symbols I have. I have one there and I have one here where this character is sitting. So there are two and so I'll pick this very character and go one, two. There we go. I just dropped from an eight to a four so uh, I'm offending them and then I'm going to activate uh, let's say this one and for every uh, dog symbol I have I'm going to drop one vote I have one here, I have one there, and I have one there. The question mark symbols are wild. And so I have three there, and I would drop myself three on the vote track, which again looks like this. I would lower my token on there by three, and then I would activate this one, which lets me change one of my possessions for another one at a loss of one. So I, let's say I'm going to, uh, I'll give up uh, my uh, yacht here, and I'll replace it with this, let's say, which is one less, costs one less. Also, I might be looking to make a blue set because perhaps blue is the one that uh, next round is going to allow me to lose an extra coin when I make that switch. And so this is the idea of the game. Again, you're going to be doing this five rounds in the game, and then the game is over. You uh, figure out what your total is in each of the three categories. Your highest is your score and you want to have the lowest score. If you do, you are the winner of the game. I was a fan of Last Will because I thought it was a well put together Euro game that had a funny theme that really helped bring the whole thing together. And I think the Prodigals Club is an even better game than Last Will. I really enjoyed this one. The mechanisms are solid. Everything works together well. I like the idea that the, uh, the game is actually modular, which I did not mention in the overview, but you can choose to play with only two of those three modules I explained to you and and just do that and you can actually combine this with Last Will and uh, sort of play this one big massive game where one of the three spots here is taken up by the Last Will board. That's um, for the Brave perhaps only but it's a neat idea but ultimately this game is a really solid Euro game lots of fun card play, neat theme cool artwork, very clever mechanisms that yes, perhaps they're a little bit uh, dry and mechanical for lack of a better term, but they work very well and they give you lots of nice turn angst of uh, wanting to place your worker out there and hoping no one's gonna take your spot. Lots of that going on. Solid, solid game. I like this one quite a bit, folks. The Prodigals Club is a solid Euro game. I really recommend it. If you uh, enjoy the Euro game genre at all, check this one out. Great stuff. The Prodigals Club. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.